So this is coming up again, so I feel like I need to talk about it. Do not use Telegram, the messenger, at all. There is no reason to use it. Um, Telegram, a lot of people using it have this idea that it is a private messenger. It's not. A lot of people have the idea that it is end-to-end -end encrypted. It is not. A lot of people have the idea that it's some kind of alt-tech or decentralized system. It is not. It is just as bad as using Facebook Messenger in terms of your privacy and security. In fact, there's a good reason to think that using something like WhatsApp, even though it's a spyware program, is better for your privacy than Telegram. Telegram honestly sucks. There's no reason to use it. So, is Telegram secure? Is Signal secure? Yes, they are secure as you, as a user, can make them be. Um, you can't just log on to Telegram anymore and be safe. No. Uh, you have to take some extra steps to actually have a secure telegram where you can, you know, do whatever you want to do and be able to sleep well at night. Hey, so I just want to say really quick, guys, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because this is how we're going to explain exactly how to use telegram and be 100% safe and secure. Are trappers safe on telegram? Well, the quick answer is absolutely not. And is there a potential that telegram serves as a major resource for the government? to shut down the traditional market in the future? Maybe. But there's a lot you need to understand before jumping into those hypoth hypotheticals. So in this episode of the Trap Tree series, we are going to tell the story of the rise of the private messaging app Telegram, and how in many ways the trappers and pushers should be really careful using this app. Now please make sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, follow me on all social medias. The links are down below in the description. Anyways. This is LMC. Let's run it. Telegram, a platform that grants people the freedom to express themselves. It's, it's a rare gem in a world dominated by platforms like Facebook. With just around 30 core employees, Telegram has managed to secure a spot among the top 10 platforms globally. Unlike other platforms, Telegram exercises minimal content moderation, allowing users to speak their minds, except when it comes to illicit content and calls for violence. Now, Pavel Durov, the uh, Russian founder of Telegram, envisioned it as an idea that everyone on this planet has the right to be free. Now, over the years, right, Facebook has faced a number of different controversies, right? Typically, it really has to do with the privacy and, you know, the scandals when it comes to, you know, influencing politics, right? And as a result, as a result people have started to question, you know, its dominance, and this is where Telegram has started to step in. Because Facebook has really ruined the reputation and you know trustworthiness, you know, an example of that being during a nearly six hour Facebook outage, right, that happened uh, two years ago in October, Telegram gained a record 70 million new users. And it even became the fifth most downloaded app in the United States, climbing up from the 56th spot. But what exactly is Telegram? So. Let's break down Telegram. So Telegram is not just a chat messaging service. It has a lot more to offer. So it's got features like voice calling, file sharing, and more. And it's surpassed 500 million active users worldwide. And I think that's really gone up to about 700 million at this point. And the platform's founder, Pavel Durov, was motivated by concerns about government surveillance, particularly after Edward Snowden's revelations. And also in his dealing with you know, the past tech companies that he started in Russia, which were co-opted by the Russian government. So he decided to leave, you know, the country and, and not start a Telegram. And so that's why Telegram includes a secret chats function, which uses end-to-end -end encryption and stores messages locally on users' devices, ensuring privacy and security. But Telegram is not just about privacy. But if we're talking at a whole here, business, business or media or... You know, there's everything on Telegram. There's like meetup for events and conventions. There, it doesn't just have to be trappers and what we're discussing. So Signal versus Telegram gets a little bit cloudy sometimes because Telegram has the channel features. It has more of a social media aspect. And that's why I think it has become so popular in our community. Now, let's actually get into the meat of this, right? When it comes to ensuring privacy, there's one fundamental principle, right? design the app in a way that minimizes data collection and provides user-friendly defaults. And this is something that I think Telegram kind of struggles with. This is right, crucial because not, 
not everyone using these apps is tech savvy. And with over 1 billion downloads and over 700 million daily active users, how, what percentage of those people are actually you know, savvy enough to protect, your, protect themselves, right? We want to protect users from making unintentional mistakes that could compromise their privacy. And apps like Signal understand this concept well in comparison to Telegram. Now, let's take Signal as an example. So, Signal has received data requests from the FBI, and they provided only the bare minimum, right? As they don't store users' personal data. You know, they comply with the government, but if they, the compliance only, you know, entails what they can provide legally, you know, which is what they only get, that's, that's all it is. So, sing, but Signal's end-to-end -end encryption ensures, right, the bare minimum that, that can be respond, you know, retrieved from the FBI. The chats remain private and the transparency is evident through open source coding. Now, when you go to Telegram, well, Telegram collects your phone number like Signal, which is you know, definitely a problem in terms of overall security, but they go a step further and gather your contacts and IP address as well. Additionally, Telegram's end-to-end -end encryption is limited to secret chats, while regular chats are only server-side encrypted. And this raises concerns about the overall privacy and security of the app. Now, while I can't stress enough, to you that you shouldn't be doing anything you know illicit because well it's the law but good thing our friends over at dr smoke have everything covered and it's above board 100 percent legal if you're looking for trusted high quality products to puff on or to chew on or to drink on go to drsmoke.com and use my discount code lmc to get 15 percent off your entire order all products are tested and like i said i've gotten some very very dope products from them and i highly recommend them so make sure to go over to drsmoke.com. Now, let's jump back into the video. Let's talk about Telegram again. So while Telegram collects your iPhone number like, sig like Signal, they go a step further and gather your contacts and IP address as well, like I mentioned, right? Telegram claims to have distributed you know, infrastructure storing data across various jurisdictions. And they mentioned that multiple court orders from different legal systems would be necessary to force them to provide data. However, the statement should be taken with a grain of salt, as there have been numerous instances where Telegram has complied with data requests related to, you know, extreme situations, not including, you know, trapping, right? But stories that are definitely concerning, and in my opinion, you know, that should be push folks to start looking at more secure apps slash programs, right? At the end of the day, you know, they also have lied to us in, in a number of different ways. I mean, if you look at their, you know, frequently asked questions on their website, you know, they say that they're, they've shared zero bytes of information with law enforcement. And that's just not true. Okay. So right here is, I mean, I mean, look at this guys. So, so that, so Telegram is literally lying to us in terms of them saying, oh, we spread it out. I mean, the German government, they got that. We're also going to, I want to talk a little bit about Israel, because there's this thing called like telegraphs, I think. I don't know if people have heard about this. Um, you know, but look at this, right? So you got the five eyes, nine eyes, 14 eyes, right? So this is why I think it's in, like, this is why I think it's important for us to like kind of address this now, because once the incentive to really crack down on people is there, like the real, like there's, it, they will. Yep. Right. And Snapchat, like, so the, the Snapchat ways of this happened, guys. It happened. What, bro? Like, what was that? Two two years ago, when they yeah. literally uh, hired the attorney general to run their ops, their opsec, in a sense. See, it's important to note that when it comes to maintaining opsec, right, the operational security against potential threats such as government agencies, it's not just about the FBI or the CIA. It includes various other departments from different governments that collaborate and share information. And just you just need one of those departments in one of these countries to really want to go after you. And because of these different treaties, well, it's going to happen, right? Different countries all collaborate under, you know, different enforcement treaties. So Telegram's data on servers located in countries within the alliances, like the 14 Eyes Alliance, can be easily accessed through subpoenas in the courts. Now, for example, we saw that the German government really the German police were able to get, you know, server data from Telegram. While we have also seen examples like Telegrass, which was an Israeli flower network platform on the, on the Telegram app with over 200,000 plus customers. And 
where multiple people were arrested. Now, when you look it up in that specific situation, they don't necessarily talk about Telegram, you know, getting, you know, being the reason why they are, you know, caught. But you do, it does raise some concern. If you are just looking for a messenger for you and your friends or your groups, you go, look into Matrix because it is much better than Telegram and it actually is what Telegram pretends to be. So let's talk about the things, let's talk about Telegram's pretenses. Firstly, people say that Telegram is open source, okay? The Telegram system, messaging system is open source. It isn't. Okay, they have open source clients that you can download on your phone or download on your computer, but they directly interact with a proprietary server side that is entirely centralized, right? So there is one Telegram botnet that everyone connects to, and it is not, we have no idea what it is running, okay? Even the source code for the desktop and mobile clients is very slowly released. So that, you know, that's another questionable thing, but it's not, you know, Telegram is not in any meaningful sense, uh, open source. It is not an open source system because the, the server side, we don't know what it's doing. Secondly, Telegram is absolutely not end to end encrypted. Your messages, all your group messages are totally readable by Telegram. And basically all of your private messages are readable by Telegram. They are not end to end encrypted. And what I mean by that is end to end encryption means uh, sending a message that only the re intended recipient can actually decrypt and read. Telegram does not work like that. Telegram invented their own kind of encryption scheme where messages are encrypted to their server where they have the decryption key and they can decrypt any group message or anything else. And then messages are re-encrypted and sent to the other person. But Telegram themselves can read anything, okay, that is on their server. There is no message you send over there that is going to be private, okay? And this is not the case in Matrix and XMPP. You can have truly end-to-end -end encrypted communication, including groups. It's a trivial thing to do, but Telegram actually does not have that, okay? Telegram can absolutely monitor your chats. Now, some people say, oh, well, Telegram does have this ability to have end-to-end -end encrypted chats. Uh, and that is true. There is an option for that, but it's not used by many people and it only works on mobile and it only works with one device at a time. So you can't hook multiple mobile devices uh, up to it. You can't, uh, you know, if someone sends you a, a message to, you know, your account on Telegram, you can't read it on desktop if it's in uh, end to end encrypted because it doesn't work on the desktop because Telegram invented their own encryption scheme and they haven't figured everything out with it, right? To, to be able to do this kind of stuff. Matrix, XMPP, it works out of the box. You don't have to worry about it, okay? That, that is something that they should not have to be dealing with, but you know, that's how it is. Thirdly, again, uh, uh, L, or, excuse me, Telegram is, it's, it's not, it's not, really open source in any meaningful sense. It's not encrypted in any meaningful sense. And it's also not a good alternative alt tech uh, company because it's just a centralized system in the same way that, that Facebook or Twitter or any of these other communication platforms are. It's definitely looking sketch with Telegram to a certain degree. I mean, imagine, imagine all the people that run these huge Telegram uh, accounts and do, and do business and don't know any better and, and like like how he said the the end-to-end -end encryption can only be that is true like that is only on a person to person level you can't just like create a channel and then have twenty five thousand members that you're advertising whatever to um on an encrypted level like as soon as you create a channel that's like that's visible 100 percent, dude 100 percent, and um and uh, NLP says, I want to say thank you to LMC and the other gentlemen to have such concern for the traditional market for uh, you to go out of your way to make this video as much appreciated. Oh, you guys help yours. No, nah, dude, this is what it's all about, though, because like this is a like the traditional market is a check on the new emerging market, the legal markets. Right. You know, a balance of power. Listen, man, and one way they're going to knock knock you out on this is this stuff specifically. So we need to make sure that people in the traditional market are fortified and ready for this and aren't, you know, Oblivious. Okay. At the end of the day, like I said, definitely be very careful about this moving forward in the future. Now, like I said, before we go on, I just want to say, make sure to go check out Dr. Smoke. If you want something to puff on, they got tons of different high quality products. It's 100% legal, ships to 50 states, and 
you can get a dope discount and support your boy here. So go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC to get 15% off your entire order. So in conclusion, while Telegram offers certain privacy features, it falls short compared to apps like Signal in terms of default encryption, data collection practices, and transparency. And also, the reason I'm doing this video too is I really want people to understand that people from the folks from the traditional market need to insulate themselves and you know really be equipping themselves with the best possible you know encryption and privacy tools what are some of those tools you told me you know you want i want you know, want to tell people about how they could you know strengthen the security the offset of their telegrams i want to go into that um so the the first thing i tell people is to go to the app store and it's on google play and it's on apple download the app sideline sign up for a free trial create a phone number um and this phone number the way sideline works it don't do text now or text plus um because the way their code works um they are not approved to get codes for verification when you sign up for for um platforms the sideline number does so you can use a sideline number and then sign up for telegram and then you have no connection to your name because if you use yeah. your so phone number right yep right there yep if you use your phone number and you use the and you are a customer of a major cell phone service provider like verizon t-mobile at&t um etc then you know that's a subpoena away your phone number equals your name if you use a big company like that so you want to in my opinion 100 percent security is get a stray talk phone and then get a sideline number um all while operating under a vpn that you buy from a third party source um i shared with with uh, lmc anyone that's not familiar with hackforms.net h-a-c-k-f-o-r-u-m-s.net it's been around since forever um but uh you can go and buy a vpn from someone who has developed it on there and it, that is a you know someone from our community quote unquote um verified trustworthy it's not nord vpn it's not some huge company that makes millions of dollars a year and is afraid of the government so they don't lose their fortune yeah. um and and we'll and you know what doc honestly i'll, I'll talk to you after this but i think i want to create some resources on my on the website and i, I got a newsletter coming out and stuff so we'll, yeah. we'll have that all kind of organized for folks that are you know really want to get that down and if you want to you know get an updated list on this i'm going to actually be putting out a newsletter here pretty soon so if you want to go to my website it's lmc.news and it'll be a pop-up make sure to join the email list join the newsletter and like I said, I don't condone any sort of illicit behavior. But at the same time, I do think that people that are, are operate, operating in, you know, weird gray markets, you know, need to be looking to secure their privacy and their future. Because it could potentially be coming. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys for rocking with me. Thank you so much for um, sticking to the end of the video. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Please make you know drop a comment down below. Share this with anybody you, you know, might find this interesting. Definitely follow me on all the social medias. The links are down below in the description. Anyways, this is LMC signing out.